Uh, good afternoon. Um, I am Jairi, and um, so I'm going to be talking about model-free replication of chaotic extractors from data using the reservoir computing approach. Um, this work was done with my collaborators, Jishen Lu, Brian Hunt, Michelle Gervin, and Ed Odd at the University of Maryland. Uh, as recently as last week, we uh, have published some of this in Chaos. So uh, if you have, uh, if you're interested, uh, I encourage you to check it out. Um, so the question that we are going to be considering today is that given some data from a dynamical system, um, can you say anything about the dynamical process that generated this data? So you have an unknown dynamical system, and um, you don't know what the equations are, and you have access to time series data from this dynamical system. So assuming that you only have access to the time series data, what can you say about the unknown dynamical system? Uh, that's the question we'll be considering today. And this is an important question, and a lot of people have looked at it using different techniques uh, so far. And the most popular tool uh, used so far for tackling this problem is based on time delay embedding. And it has time delay embedding has been somewhat effective for lower dimensional chaotic uh, attractors. Uh, but we are going to be considering much higher dimensional attractors today and much higher dimensional spatial temporal chaotic systems. Uh, so we are going to approach this problem from a very different perspe perspective uh, by using machine learning. Uh, we will not be using time delay embedding. Uh, we will be we'll have a different perspective today. So we'll be considering uh, two uh, separate but related questions. Uh, the first question is, can we, um, given a limited time series of past measurements, can we predict the future state of a dynamical system, at least in the short term? And that's what we call uh, short-term forecasting or short-term prediction. And the second question is, can we learn something about the long-term dynamical behavior of the system? Um, so this is uh, the long-term ergodic behavior of the system uh, that we consider. Specifically, we'll ask, can we uh, use our setup to find the Lyapunov exponents of a higher dimensional dynamical system? So let me introduce you to the concept of reservoir com computing. It was independently introduced by uh, Jaeger and Mass uh, almost simultaneously. Jaeger was looking at it from a machine learning point of view, and Mass was um, looking at the system from a, a uh, from a biological, uh, plausible mechanism for learning. Uh, that was his perspective. So the main component of this setup uh, is a very high dimensional dynamical system called the reservoir. Um, so this is not to be confused with the, uh, dimension, the dynamical system that you're studying, that is the data generating dynamical system. Um, this is part of the reservoir computing system. Uh, so the reservoir provides a rich repository of dynamics and uh, it is most commonly implemented using artificial neural networks, although there are some interesting uh, hardware implementation using high-speed photonics um, and silicon chips, et cetera. Um, but today we are going to be looking at a neural network uh, reservoir implementation. So in our setup, the reservoir is a network of DR neuron-like units. Um, so this is uh, an illustration. Uh, each node I in the network has multiple inputs and outputs and a scalar state, which will be denoted by R sub I of T. So the uh, state of the um, entire uh, neural network will be denoted by this vector R of T. Uh, and the weighted connections between the nodes can be represented uh, by an adjacency matrix A. So um, the element of this matrix Aij will denote the strength of the connection between node i and node j. So this is a directed uh, adjacency matrix uh, of size dr by dr. And uh, the important things to note about this matrix are that it is sparse. Uh, it will be randomly generated, and it will be fixed. So we will not be training the weights using the data, um, unlike some other implementations of recurrent neural networks. Now consider the goal of prediction of a dynamical system. And in this case, uh, in lieu of knowledge of the dynamics, so we don't know the equations of, we, so we do not know the equations of the dynamical system, but we assume that we have a lot of measurements from the dynamical system. And the measurements are in the form of limited time series um, vector u of t in the interval mi uh, minus capital T to zero. And this is what we call the training data. And what we'll do is uh, we're going to couple um, the input U of T to the reservoir uh, through a fixed randomly generated input matrix Wn. And during the training phase, uh, the reservoir will evolve according to this equation. So as you can see here, the dynamics of the reservoir uh, is dictated by self-interactions uh, due to this term. 
and due to external input forcing due to um, this term. And you have a hyperbolic tangent function, which uh, makes the dynamics nonlinear. Uh, and the hyperbolic tangent function acts element-wise on a vector, um, in case you were wondering. Um, so once the training phase is over, we are going to find output weight matrix that uh, minimizes the following loss function. Uh, so the goal here is to find an output weight matrix W out so that given an input to the reservoir, the reservoir should be able to predict the next time step. So uh, that's the goal of finding this uh, W out output function. So the up output matrix is a map from the reservoir state onto the output. And in, a, in the prediction phase, we are going to close the feedback loop so that um, the reservoir evolves according to this equation. And uh, the, so the, what, what the reservoir is doing here is it's predicting the one step output, feeding it back to the input, and then predicting the next step and so on. So at this point, the reservoir is an autonomous dynamical system, uh, which is capable of emulating the system that it was trained on. And we are going to be looking at this uh, kuramoto sivashinsky system, which is a nonlinear spatiotemporal chaotic partial differential equation. We will be using this uh, system to illustrate our results. Um, so this system describes a one-dimensional field y of x comma t, which evolves according to this partial differential equation in the domain 0 to L uh, with periodic boundary conditions. If you numerically integrate the system, uh, this is what a typical trajectory looks like. On the y-axis, you have the spatial variable. On the x-axis, you have the time. Uh, and the units, as you will notice, uh, for time are uh, in the units of Lyapunov time where one Lyapunov time is defined as the average time it takes for um, an error in a, or, or a perturbation to grow by a factor of E in a, in a chaotic system. Uh, and this color will um, represent the uh, scalar field Y of X comma T. So for short-term forecasting of chaos, we are going to demonstrate our results with a chaos system with a parameter L equals 60. And for this parameter choice, uh, the Kaplan-York dimension of the KS attractor is approximately 15. Um, we will come back to this point later, but I just want to point out that this is a 15-dimensional attractor at this point. So, uh, so these are the results for short-term forecasting of chaos. Um, you, you have the top panel, which shows the true state. Uh, the second panel shows the reservoir prediction. And the third panel shows the error, which is the difference between the reservoir prediction and the true state. So um, as you can see from the color scheme here, uh, a value of zero is indicated by a green color. So if you notice, uh, the error is very slow for uh, five multiples of the Lyapunov time. Um, so we say that the reservoir computer is really good at learning the dynamics from the data, and it is capable of making uh, high quality short term predictions when the system dynamics is unknown. Now, um, I'll point out that you know, no matter how you put your model is uh, for, of a chaotic system, um, the predictions are always going to diverge from the true state. Um, that's uh, just a fundamental property of chaotic systems because of exponential growth of errors. Uh, but you'll notice in this picture that the dynamics of the system of the reservoir prediction um, looks uh, very chaos-like even after the prediction has diverged from the true state. Um, by that, I mean that if I gave you um, these two panels, you wouldn't be able to tell which one came from the true uh, equations and which one was produced by our reservoir uh, setup. And so we try to quantify this observation a bit further. Uh, we call this the climate of the reservoir dynamics, and uh, by which we mean the long chaotic properties of the reservoir dynamics. And we ask, has the reservoir truly learned the behavior of the kuramoto sivishinsky system? And if it has, uh, the ergodic properties of the autonomous reservoir dynamical system should resemble those of the true system. Which brings us to our second uh, part of our talk, which is can we learn something about the long-term dynamics of the system and use uh, our setup to find the Lyapunov exponents of a high-dimensional dynamical system. So again, uh, there are some delay coordinate embedding methods for finding Lyapunov exponents from data and which have been uh, used for low-dimensional chaos. Uh, we are going to exploit the reservoir dynamics to find the Lyapunov exponents of high-dimensional systems.
So here, uh, I'll point out that we know the evolution equation of the post-training autonomous reservoir system because we built it, we decided what our reservoir is, we decided the weight and everything. We do not know the equations of the true system from where the data is coming, but we do know everything about our reservoir. From this, we can calculate whatever derivatives we need um, and whatever we need to calculate the equation of the tangent map evolution. The tangent map uh, tells us how a perturbation grows in time. Um, and we can use these uh, to compute the Lyapunov exponents of the reservoir dynamical system. And we can ask, are the Lyapunov exponents of the reservoir same as those of the data generating system? And here's um, a result. So uh, if you look at this picture, I've plotted uh, in blue the Lyapunov spectrum of the reservoir. And in red, I've plotted the Lyapunov spectrum of the true kuramoto sibishinsky system. So the first thing you will notice is that the reservoir has been able to get all the positive Lyapunov exponents really well. Uh, but you will see that there's a mismatch in the negative Lyapunov exponents. So the negative Lyapunov exponents of the reservoir do not seem to match the uh, corresponding exponents of the true kuramoto sibishinsky system. But um, let me. But, but what happens is that if you remove the two zero exponents of the kuramoto sibishinsky system, so if I remove these two exponents and then reorder the spectrum in, um, in by size, you'll see that the so, Lyapunov exponents of the reservoir system fall right on top of the Lyapunov exponents of the true kuramoto sibishinsky system. So from this, we uh, conclude that the reservoir uh, did not reproduce two zero Lyapunov exponents of the kuramoto sibishinsky system. However, it was able to produce all the positive Lyapunov exponents as well as uh, a lot of the negative Lyapunov exponents uh, just by looking at the time series data. And um, so we have some ideas about why the uh, two zero Lyapunov exponents were not reproduced by the reservoir. However, I'll not be going into that right now because of uh, time limitations, but uh, you should definitely um, uh, look at our paper and where we go into more detail about uh, this part of the talk. Um, so to conclude, the Lyapunov exponents of the KF system are indeed accurately reproduced by the reservoir. Um, and this is, uh, as I pointed out earlier, this is a 15-dimensional attractor. It's a high-dimensional chaotic system, and we are able to get a lot of the positive and negative Lyapunov exponents just by looking at some training data. And to conclude uh, this, uh, my talk, uh, machine learning using reservoir computing networks can be a very effective tool for studying high-dimensional chaos. Uh, including uh, problems with, uh, which are difficult to tackle with traditional tools. Um, and with more research, we believe it could be useful for uh, studying a number of problems where high dimensional dynamics is involved with potential applications, uh, including uh, weather prediction, understanding neural activity, control of chaos, controlling robots, et cetera.